<coughs> Number 10, Ballora. There are a lot of people who are hopeful that we will see the return of Ballora and with her get potentially more information on the Afton family and possibly William's wife who she maybe was made to resemble, we're still not really sure on that yet. The purple hand at the end of the security breach trailer had many fans speculating that this could mean Ballora's return as purple is her color. I however am more inclined to think that the purple hand could belong to someone else who may or may not make this list. But I also think that Ballora could end up being rebuilt. After all, many fans believe that Ballora did not contain a soul within her, so it is possible that she could be rebuilt and her blueprints did at one point exist as well, so someone other than William could even get their hands on those and rebuild her, even update her and include her as an attraction at the Mega Pizza Plex. Number 9, Funtime Foxy. Or really any of the Funtime animatronics. I am basically ready for an animatronic jamboree or parade with everyone showing up. I also have a theory that there could be some kind of storage facility beneath the pizza plex that stores all of the animatronics. Just based on that more behind the scenes setting that we saw explored in the trailer, where it's all dark and metal and there are pipes everywhere, it reminds me a lot of Circus Babies Entertainment and Rental, I'm just saying. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, but if you are as excited for Security Breach as we are, be sure to show that excitement by giving this video a thumbs up. I promise if you thumbs up the video, you will get the game faster. That's just how it works. I don't make the rules, I just play by them. Number 8, Golden Freddy. I am always hoping to see Golden Freddy because he is just my favorite version of Freddy Fazbear. He is known for being quiet, sneaky, and pretty rare. I also would just love to see if we get a new version of the character in Security Breach or how his appearance could could be updated there. In Five Nights at Freddy's AR Special Delivery, Golden Freddy has like solid gold teeth. So to me, the golden opportunities here are endless for what kind of appearance changes we could see happen with this character. I personally am into the idea of a neon or shiny Golden Freddy. Just all neon everything for me, please. Number 7, Foxy. I always want more Foxy, and with the new crew in this game featuring seemingly Roxanne Wolf in kind of Foxy's play. I'm hoping we'll see some alternate version of Foxy still in the game, even if it's not the original, obviously. I mean, we have Roxanne Wolf. She looks pretty cool, but it's not Foxy. I mean, I guess you could already guess from the inclusion of Funtime Foxy on this list, I am a big Foxy fangirl. I love pirates, and I also really want to see some acknowledgement of just all the games and their animatronics in this newest one. Also, if William Afton could have potentially found a way to live on, it is possible that he could be making new original animatronics and trying to harvest new souls to trap within them. I'm just thinking out loud here. Could be possible. Number six. Six, balloon Boy. Or the Balloon Boys Band, maybe? As Top 10 Gaming Co-Host and Viper Girl Channel Host Bree suggested to me earlier today. I love the idea of a Balloon Boys Band, actually. It just sounds so great. All the Balloon Boys. I personally find Balloon Boy so irritating, which is also why I kind of want to see him return and watch how players struggle with his existence in this game. I think we could see an alternate version of him in terms of gameplay function anyways, with the mysterious character that some people spotted in the trailer, appearing as a disruptive animatronic monkey with symbols or as a moon. A lot of people are saying it's the moon to the sun animatronic, which yeah, could be a thing. Or it could be someone different. There's lots of options. We don't really know yet. But to me, it also kind of, the position just looked like uh, a monkey with symbols. I, I don't know if I'm the only one that's seeing that. I think I am. Perhaps this moon animatronic or, or monkey with symbols animatronic could even cause animatronics to be attracted to you as you attempt to sneak around the pizza plex. I'm just saying, if it's a monkey with symbols, you know what I mean? No one else thinks it's that. Everyone in the comments is gonna be like, Amanda, it's not a thing. Get out. <laughs> Number five, Circus Baby. So I know how unlikely this is before you start, but I still really love Circus Baby and I just just, I want it to happen. I know she was burned up in the fire and I need to let her go, but she's just such a great animatronic and character and I'm just still so hopeful that her sharing a voice actor with Vanessa with both characters being voiced by Heather Masters could mean that they end up 
being somehow the same person or that there's some connection there. That voice actor connection could be the link we need as a hint that Circus Baby is still alive in some way and has somehow survived. I'm also of the mindset that all of William Afton's children at this point could have just actually been hyper realistic humanoid animatronics that he created and they weren't actually real children. And if that's true, who is to say he doesn't have backup somewhere and is simply looking to harvest souls to give them new life? Maybe they were just like the other animatronics, but they were like, looked like people. I don't know. Number four, Mangle. A fan favorite that I would love to see return is Mangle. As far as I recall, Mangle has not been destroyed and could still be out on the prowl somewhere. Mangle is a fan favorite because of how terrifying they are and how mysterious they are as well. We still don't really know too much about Mangle. Are they possessed by a dog? Are they just an animatronic gone haywire? Or were they driven mad by children constantly disassembling and reassembling them? We don't know for sure, but having them appear in security breed might get us closer to finding out. Number three, William Afton. Or William Afton as Glitchtrap, perhaps? I know William Afton is gone, but I think we're all expecting that he could be returning in this game, at least in some capacity. Remember when I was talking about that purple hand at the end of the trailer? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's William Afton. With the appearance of Glitchtrap and the reluctant follower of Vanny in Help Wanted, many fans expect that we will see William Afton's imprint or soul return in Security Breach, and that he will attempt to make his move from the digital world to the real world once more. I personally am excited for the potential return of William Afton, but I'm also hoping we'll see him thwarted in the end with the new big bad appearing and taking over his legacy in this game. Mwahaha. Number two, Mrs. Afton. Honestly, it seems more likely based on all the research that I've gathered that Vanessa is probably not going to end up being Mrs. Afton as I kind of initially thought she might be, unless we are doing some kind of, I don't know, weird time traveling stuff or there's something that I missed. Still, what I am hoping, regardless of who Vanessa really is, is that we'll get to find out more about William Afton's partner, love, or wife, as I still believe that she is the key to understanding why William became a killer. And I believe she's she's out there somewhere, waiting, waiting to be integrated into the story. Mrs. Afton doesn't even have to appear as a character featured in the game in terms of someone playable, a victim, or an animatronic. Even just having some kind of flashback or just more hints towards her would suffice for me, for her inclusion in the game. I just want more pieces to help me like solve this puzzle. There's so many like gaps in the puzzle and I'm like, help, please help. Number one, Stitch Wraith. It's really hard at this point for me to decide just who I would want the most in this game when it comes to characters. But the Stitch Wraith is definitely really, really high up there, so I decided to give him the top spot for this list. With the books and the games being mostly separate in terms of stories, the Stitch Wraith's appearance could give us a more established and reliable link between them than just, you know, all the clues, the similarities, and the theories that we've pulled from the books thus far. The Stitch Wraith, I think, could also make a very interesting antagonist for not just the books, but also the games, as the way he's described is definitely horrifying, and his whole purpose in the book seems pretty sinister and awful. I don't know about you, but I personally am ready for my Stitch Wraith jump scare now. Please give it to me, Scott Cawthon. Give me the Stitch Wraith jump scare. And attend Marco Polo. Honestly, this is just because it's kind of on my bucket list. I want to play a game of Marco Polo in the ball pit, a la Sheldon Cooper and Leonard Hofstetter in Big Bang Theory. When Sheldon broke into like a children's play place at like 3 a.m. to use the balls in the ball pit as like hydrogen atoms to like visualize stuff. It's the same episode as the classic I don't need sleep, I need answers meme, which will honestly be me when Security Breach comes out. That's, that's gonna be interesting. Oh man, I'm gonna recreate that meme a whole bunch. At the end of the episode though, Sheldon is shown running around the ball pit, popping up behind Leonard saying bazinga, and then going back down into the balls <laughs> before popping his head up again behind him. This is what I want to do in Security Breach. I don't even need a full-on minigame. I just need this to be a like a, a actual mechanic in the game, and I'll be happy. Like if Chica follows us into the ball pit, like we should have the option to like I can't believe I have to say this but like hide in the balls Which sounds weird, but but technically that's what we were all doing before we were born. Am I right? Well, I mean half of us anyway <laughs> in a nine hide and seek 
Okay, technically this number is cheating because the whole point of this game is basically we'll be to playing hide and seek with these animatronics, but I mean like something to do in the day part of the game. Because like while yes the story picks up at night and that's what we've been seeing in the trailers, we'll need an explanation as to why Gregory didn't leave with his parents and why he's at the place alone. Additionally, it appears like we'll be having a day night cycle to the game, so we'll need something to do during the day, even if it's only for the first few minutes of the game. So will we find ourselves playing hide and seek with other AI children? And that's why we end up being separated from our parents because we're playing hide and seek. Plus, it would also serve as an easy way to introduce the mechanics that we'll be using throughout the entire playthrough with this mini game. Because again, this whole game is basically going to be hide and seek. So honestly, I think it's a pretty solid idea, but knowing FNAF, it's never what I think. It's a day off at least. In a date tag. I know you may think this sounds stupid, but tag or some game like that with these animatronics would be interesting as hell. With the various different animatronic abilities from the looks with Monty's strength and most importantly Roxy's speed, classic children's games like tag or hide and seek like I just mentioned are definitely a fun addition. And let's be real, okay? Kids at a pizza flex like this are going to be playing these games anyway. And if FNAF wanted to finally introduce a multiplayer element to this game, this would be the way to do it. By having like crab style mini games with classic children's games. Maybe having someone be an animatronic instead of a kid. Like whoever is it would be Roxy or another animatronic each with a different ability or something. Or in hide and seek whoever is searching is also an animatronic. I mean I don't know. It could be a good way to introduce a multiplayer element to the series that's been understandably single player so far. However with Vanny saying that she has all of our friends in the first FNAF teaser ever for this game, could that really have been Steel Wool hinting at multiplayer minigames online? And it's 7 8-bit minigames. The 8-bit minigames are a staple in the FNAF community, and are some of the parts that reveal the most lore about the games. The 8-bit minigames revealed the first victim, the detailed origins of the puppet, and even what William did after killing Charlotte. The minigames have been incredibly helpful in figuring out the absolute bonkers lore of the series. The 8-bit minigames were even crucial in finding the good ending of FNAF 3, since we had to complete the Happiest Day minigame in order to get the good slash canon ending and release the souls of the original five missing children. So these mini games have become an integral part of the series and to omit them from this game would be a mistake and a disservice to the series that has been featured alongside God of War and Call of Duty because of the lore that built the fan base. So there better be one at least. And it's six animatronic boxing. <laughs> Why? Okay, I doubt this will happen, but I really straight up just want to have a full on fight scene between us as Freddy and another animatronic. Probably Monty because he seems to be the strongest character, but I just, I, I picture uh, a fight like Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. I want it so bad. It's certainly an interesting thing that I want to happen, and based on what we've seen in the various trailers, it's not going to happen at all. But this is the kind of thing I want from a FNAF game. I want to beat the ever-loving snot out of these animatronics with my own bare hands. Or I guess, in the case of a Freddy Mech, my own bare hands. Get it? Cause he's a bear? No, okay, fine, just be lame. But like, imagine an animatronic boxing ring with like the kids on the outside cheering while we watch animatronics tussle or even like do it ourselves. Ah! That should be a whole separate game on its own. Great, now I, now I want someone to make a FNAF Rock'em Sock'em Robots. If someone's doing that on Etsy, I'll, I'll f buy it. Halfway through into number five, arcade cabinets. With the Pizza Plex having their own arcade section, like basically any Chuck E. Cheese would, the idea of the arcade games, or at least a couple of them actually working, would be pretty cool. Especially things like pinball or something. This could also be a great way to introduce the 8-bit minigames into this style of game, since between nights, doesn't really seem like it's gonna happen when the game only looks like it's planned to be like a one night long kind of thing. And in addition to that, this would also be an interesting way to incorporate my ideas of how they could make like a real life Freddy Fazbear's where they have like the custom arcade games about Midnight Motors and Fruity Maze and whatnot. So maybe we'll end up seeing a couple of our old favorites in this new game. Hell, this could really just be the most successful pizzeria that someone made in Pizzeria Simulator. And then that's why there's a ball pit and like image 
imagery of Helpy plastered on seemingly everything, which would be funny as hell. Like this whole pizza plex came from one person that Henry used to try to lure William to his death, and now William's just using it to get to Gregory for whatever reason. <laughs> that that's that that'd be an interesting theory. And at four, bowling. Bonnie seems to be not appearing in Security Breach. However, they'll be there in spirit. They'll also be there as the mascot of the bowling alley that seemingly appears on the upper level of the pizza plex's main area. I don't expect this to be like Wii bowling, although that would be fun as hell. Uh, but instead, if there is a bowling mini game, I think it would just be like a simple like you grab it and then you throw it and just kind of hope you hit some pins. Nothing too extreme with like a scoring system or anything, but just some small time fun, you know? Like how if you're playing Gary's Mod and a map you're playing on during like TTT or something has a bowling alley kind of thing, like TTT underscore or bowling alley, for example. Man, I just realized how few people may actually know what I'm talking about and know what Gary's Mod is and not know the joy that is Yugg's cast TTT videos. Wow, I feel old now. Let's move on before my hair turns gray on camera. Jeez. Getting close to the end in number three, go-karting. Roxanne seems to be the speed demon of this game, only further enhancing her connection to Foxy. However, with this comes her go-karting track, which we've seen briefly in one of the trailers from what I remember, but we've also gotten a closer look at with some promotional photos unlocked during Docco's charity livestream. But come on, a freaking go-kart racing track would be absolutely incredible. This FNAF game has the ability to cross so many genres if they do this properly. Like, like if things work out and they play this right, Security Breach could open a whole load of people to the world of FNAF just because of the variety present within the minigames. And if you need to play through the story to unlock those minigames, then they have to get immersed in the story and the gameplay of the actual series as well and not just playing it like for like Mario Kart but FNAF. Imagine that though, like a Mario Kart FNAF where you play as like Gregory or other various animatronics, even unlocking them as playable characters as you progress through the story. I mean it's probably not going to happen, especially not like that, and we're probably hyping this game up way too much for it to reasonably meet expectations, but that's what happens when you get a fan base that's absolutely this freaking bonkers, Scott, so uh... Good job, maybe you should have just given us the lore straight up. But ultimately, in number two, mini golf. Thanks to trailers and some stills from promo images, we know that Montgomery Gator is going to have his own form of mini golf course in the Mega Pizza Plex, meaning hopefully that we'll get some form of mini golf mini game. Mostly because with everything being shut down, I need my ability to mini golf. Plus, every girl I suggest it to ends up ghosting me. So if I can't do it in real life, I better damn well be able to do it in Security Breach. I mean, the game was delayed not only due to COVID, but originally because because Steel will wanted to make the game bigger than Scott's original scope, right? So maybe they figured if we're adding all these sections, maybe we should make them into playable mini games and like a special daytime Pizzaplex mini game menu or something from like the home screen or something like that. I feel like that's an incredibly missed opportunity if it doesn't happen. If this game is going to cost as much as I think it will, given the current retail price of new console games being around $80, this better have hours worth of content and replayability, okay? We better get Golf with Friends FNAF Edition out for this, basically, okay? And if not, Steel Wool and Scott, you can buy that idea off me, okay? Just like DM me on Instagram. Link is in the description. <laughs> Finally, and at number one, laser tag. Much like the mini golf, we know there's going to be a section for laser tag inside the Mega Pizza Plex. So, considering how there seems to be a day and night cycle, we better be able to play laser tag during the day or I'm going to be mad. This is like the one thing I want in this game. I don't care if we don't get go-karting or mini-golf or 8-bit mini-games, okay? As long as we can play laser tag, I'm fine with it. Yes, I'm that guy. I love laser tag. I grew up playing it. And if COVID wasn't a thing, I'd be a regular Barney Stinson playing it every other weekend, okay? Laser tag is like my favorite thing. It's fun, active, and I get to take out my anger by shooting lasers at little kids, okay? And especially given what the FNAF series has done to me, I think I've deserved that, okay? I think I've earned it. In my hometown, there was like this laser tag place called Laser Extreme, okay? And it was my, it was my favorite place to go. I'd go with my friend Nick, and we'd wreck kids using superheroes as code names. And then I'd go with my friend Cameron, and then that's where he got his nickname of Spike. And it's become a meme at this point, okay? Those were the days. 
It unfortunately closed, and I think it was partially due to COVID. And Laser Quest blows. It's bad, okay? Don't go to Laser Quest. But being able to play against animatronics in the Mega Pizza Plex will make me happy. It would be like the pirate ride in FNAF VR. It's all I would do in that game. And 10 VR. The most likely scenario is that this game is in VR. I covered this in the FNAF trailer breakdown video released earlier today. If you haven't seen that, I suggest you check it out up in the top right corner, but I'll go over it again quickly here. Scott is once again working with Steel Wool Studios, the company behind the VR part of Help Wanted. So why would he be working with them if the game wasn't in VR? Plus, VR is the future of gaming. I've said this multiple times and I stand by it. Especially when Oculus has just announced the Oculus Quest 2, which will be around the same price as the PS5 or Xbox Series X. The game will also be available on PC, so if you want to hop into the game and have a VR-ready computer, I suggest looking into the various VR options that you have. I have an Oculus Rift S. I got it on Amazon for like 500 bucks plus tax, so it wasn't fairly expensive. Well, in comparison. But like, I love it and I've gotten much use out of that thing way more than the 600 bucks I paid. It's what allowed us to play FNAF VR on this channel. The game will most likely start out as a VR game, but will probably get itself a flat release, I'm sure, with more lore reveals just like they did with Help Wanted. Speaking of which, in at number 9, lore. There has been a lot of confusion surrounding the current state of the FNAF games. We're all trying to figure out the identity of Golden Freddy and who Michael Apton really is, but it could all be for nothing. The FNAF games that we know, FNAFs 1-7, are actually canon in the series as being games made by quote unquote, a rogue indie game developer. So this could all be for nothing, at least that's what we think anyway. We seem to have forgotten that there is a developer who made FNAF games in the FNAF world. It's not Scott, but he has no name yet, so I'm gonna call him Scott because he used his own picture for the guy in the game. So I'd like to know more about this and him and see if piecing together the story of the first seven games is even worth it anymore. The games he made very well may not be the ones Scott made in real life, but they could be those games still. So until we know more about it, it will be difficult to really do anything for this community. Honestly, like you can figure it out, but Scott could just toss it. I'd also like to know more about Vanny and how her being possessed or controlled by Glitch Trap works. Her voice glitches in the trailer, so how is it doing that if she's a real human? I want to know. I got to know. That could be the mystery for these games moving forward, but I'd still like to know more information before getting into FNAF 10? Is this the ninth? I think this is the ninth game, because Help One was eight. Yeah. Jesus. In at eight, laser tag. This could just be a me thing, but the ability to have like a Foxy Pirates Cove ride-esque game in this FNAF VR game would be legend, wait for it, dairy, haha. <laughs> Another How I Met Your Mother reference. As soon as I saw the area with Montgomery Gator holding a laser gun, I needed to play it. It took me back to my childhood. My friend Cameron and I used to go to this place called Laser Extreme. It was an awesome, cheap laser tag place in downtown Oshawa that was always a blast. They would let you drop in on games, so Cameron and I would go and get first and second every time. And then I would also do this with my other friend Nick. We would constantly get first and second. Laser tag was such a big part of my childhood, and being able to play it in this game, even if it's just against animatronics, would bring both a sense of nostalgia and joy to my life. I would never stop playing. Unfortunately, Laser Extreme had to close before I went off to college, which really sucks because the only other place was Laser Quest. And they just, they're not good. And seven jump scares. From the trailer and what we can tell about the gameplay, there seems to only be one or two jump scares that will be present in the game. Vanny has a jump scare guaranteed, as we saw from the trailer, and it's obvious. And maybe that Balloon Boy Moon animatronic from the kitchen scene will have one as well, considering how he has red eyes. Maybe the red eyes mean the animatronic is hostile and normal means not. Hmm, that's a theory for another video. Would you like a list on security breach theories? Let me know in the comments. However, I hope that all the animatronics will have the ability to be hostile and jump scare you because, you know, variety is the spice of life. Or I guess in this case, the spice of your anti-life? I don't know. I also hope we get some of the jump scares from In the Flesh, where Vanny slits her throat and bites her face off. I think it would be fun. Maybe we can see her cut your ear off too, like in that story. And in 6, Story Mode. There are plenty of games in the FNAF series with story, but one of those games is not Help Wanted. Yes, there is a story, but it's not as cut and dry as some of the previous games like FNAF 6, Sister Location, or hell, even FNAF 1. So hopefully this time, aside from just getting mini games, we can get a whole story going at once. We could get a mixture with a story mode that goes over all the games, and you can play the mini games that you've already played through again once you've unlocked them. 
I think that would be a great way to do this game and I'm really hoping that's how it plays out. I would play laser tag over and over again. If there's no laser tag in this game, I'm going to feel cheated. Screw full bright mod, give me a FNAF laser tag mod, damn it. Halfway through in a number five, multiplayer. Vanny says in the trailer, your friends are with me, which indicates to me that I finally have friends, yes! but also the potential for multiplayer to be added into the game. We know that multiplayer was added in Help Wanted. I mentioned it in the top 10 FNAF scrapped features that would have changed everything, so if you want to check that out, click the iCard. But they didn't do anything with multiplayer. The files are added, but they don't work. Perhaps this is because they plan on adding it here. It could be that perhaps the hosts of the server will play as Gregory, the one Vanny is calling for, and the others will play as the friends that she has with her, but she just has one less for every other person that's on. It would make sense and be hella fun, yet it may make things less scary, but it can still be terrifying if done right, and Scott does it right. No innuendo. Or your friends could play as the animatronics looking to protect you and maybe eventually even turn on you, which would make the betrayal feel even worse. Plus, it would make laser tag way more fun. I'm stuck on this laser tag thing. I want it. Bad. And at 4, open world slash free roam. The ability to free roam in a FNAF game has been requested since the start, and we got a taste of that in the Corn Maze minigame from the Curse of Dreadbear DLC from Help Wanted, so it technically has been done, but we were stuck in one area, so true free roam or open world gameplay hasn't been realized in the FNAF canon yet. But I believe it to be entirely possible that FNAF Security Breach will be a free roaming experience, as for the reasons explained in the trailer breakdown video. You know, with In the Flesh being about a free roam VR FNAF game, and the Corn Maze minigame from Dreadbear being such a big success last time. I'm sure we will get at least a portion of this game with the ability to freely roam the Pizzaplex while trying to avoid Vanny. Yes, I know it's Pizzaplex. Last time I said Plazaplex, I apologize. My script was autocorrecting. I was writing it at the same time I had to be filming it. Honestly, it's the same thing with this list. As I'm writing this line, I have to film an hour later. And I'm filming now, so it's kind of weird. I'm like talking to my past self. Getting close to the end in a number three, The Stitch Wraith. All of these Fazbear Frights books have been setting up the character of the Stitch Wraith. The Stitch Wraith is an animatronic endoskeleton that was brought to life by Dr. Phineas Taggard, who was doing research with human emotion, particularly agony, and its ability to bring objects to life. Phineas claimed that the agony is the most intense and powerful human emotion, and that it can latch onto things and be used as sort of a power source of sorts. This story was meant to explain the remnant and how possession works in this series, however, the character has been the topic of every single epilogue story in these Fazbear Frights books, so we thought he'd be making an appearance in Security Breach, until the trailer at least. But the thing is, he still can. Remember, the Stitch Wraith has only been discussed at the end of every book, after the main stories are over. So maybe there will be a secret level or even a DLC that introduces the Stitch Wraith into the game canon after everything has been completed. And at 2, In the Flesh. Only days before the FNAF trailer was released, we got the fifth Fazbear Frights book, Bunny Call. It's worth noting that this was meant to be the final Fazbear Frights book before the new game, so the timing of its release and the game trailer can't be a coincidence, especially when the whole book revolves around Springtrap, William Afton, the man who possesses Vanny, the breaker of chains, the mother of dragons, the mother of dead chomped children. I got the book so I could read the stories for myself, and In the Flesh sticks out to me as a very similar to this game. Not only does the release timing line up, but In the Flesh is a story about Matt, a video game designer working on the latest FNAF VR game, Springtrap's Revenge, where you must avoid Springtrap in a maze. This seems like it's hinting at the game's story, or at least one of the levels. Vanny is the obvious replacement for Springtrap because she's his disciple, even if it's unwillingly. The fact that this book was meant to be the last one is not a coincidence. Everything lines up too perfectly, okay? It's bound to be meaningful in some way. If things even line up slightly, we're like, Scott intended it. This lines up, like, immaculately. See, I use words that I have never said before. Finally, in a number one, animatronics. So far, there are only five confirmed new animatronics for Security Breach. Glamrock Freddy and Chica, Montgomery Gator, Roxanne Wolf, and the Moon animatronic from the trailer that looks an awful lot like Balloon Boy. Vandy is currently known to be a human, but after her voice started glitching, I don't know if she's human, or if she's only part human, or if she's just been possessed. Yes, we think she's possessed, but what if she's just a highly realistic robot like Charlie from The Fourth Closet, or Foxy Bro and how he's the crying child to into a robot, and the survival logbook is him realizing 
realizing that he's a robot before letting himself burn in FNAF 6. If you want more on that theory, go check it out by clicking in the top right corner. Yes, I've plugged three videos this time, but I need to. However, this game is probably going to need more animatronics. We don't know the gameplay for certain, aside from the maze mini game running away from Vanny, but other than that, we don't know what kind of situations this game will be putting us and these animatronics in. From the trailer, they seem to be our friend, but that could easily be a ploy, since William was the one who created the animatronics. Maybe not these ones specifically, but they're a part of his franchise, and so is Vanny. They could all be working together to pull a double cross, or triple cross, depending on how you look at it, because like, he crosses William, and then they cross you. Is that a triple, or is that a I don't fucking know. There we have it friends, the top 10 things we want to see in FNAF Security Breach. Which of these features would you like and do you have anything I didn't mention that you'd like to see? Like perhaps a mobile release of the flat version? Let me know down below and on your way down be sure you hit like and subscribe for daily gaming content and ring that bell to join the clan and level up. Thank you all so much for watching, I have been in Shower Man Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video. Oh, I gotta breathe. I'm running up the stairs so many times. 500 bus plug. 500 bus. And we got a taste of that in the corn maze minigame from the Curse of Dread Bell. D Damn it, Bell. Curse of Dread Bell. <laughs> Surprised I didn't f that up. Montgomery Gamer. Gamer? <laughs> What's up, gamer?